Okay, so we're dealing with child nutrition today. And this is, this is very, very important because everybody eats. And um, there is this saying that you are what you eat. And so for uh, newborn children, and of course those as they grow up, the nutrition is so important. And uh, viewers need to be educated on how they can properly you know, feed their children and have them grow up strong, healthy, you know, and vibrant. Uh, Pastor, talk to us about children nutrition. Thank you very much. First and foremost, nutrition has a purpose. Okay. The purpose of nutrition is to ensure that there is one, energy for daily activities, mm -hmm. building of a strong and a healthy body and mind, mm -hmm. three, to help fight infections and various other problems that can attack the child. Okay. If we look at nutrition this way, then fourthly, we'll now talk about helping a child to grow in a balanced way in a family setting oh. and in the environment. Nutrition play a role in all of this. Okay. So that means there must be enough energy for daily activity without causing the child to lose what the child already has okay. in spite of his storage. Every child is born already with some form of nourishment going on okay. inside the pregnancy. Then once the child is born, nutrition starts outside the pregnancy. Now the child is exposed both to the environment and to nutrition. Mm. In the womb, not exposed like that to the environment, it just gets the nutrition from the placenta. So after delivery, we expect that nutrition will commence. Okay. In fact, nutrition is a sign of good health in a newborn baby. Mm. A newborn baby is supposed to be able to feed because nutrition is important. Okay. After breathing, is feeding. <laughs> so the feeding aspect now comes with the most readily available food that is already prepared mm -hmm. before the baby comes, and that's breast milk. Okay. So the breastfeeding will ensure the child has nutrition for growth, nutrition for development, nutrition for daily activities, mm. and nutrition for prevention of certain ailments and diseases that is in the environment, because now the child is, has come out of the protective environment of the womb. Mm. And of course, nutrition for a balanced family life, psychological development, mm. and stuff like that. So immediately, feeding must start. A newborn must be ready to feed. A healthy newborn is ready to feed within 10, 15 minutes of delivery. Mm. And most will feed within 30 minutes mm. of delivery. After which, you now begin to step up to other family diets as they grow older. Okay. So if nutrition is optimal, it will provide energy. It will provide growth. Mm. It will help with development of the mind and various parts of the body. And it will also provide some form of protection against common diseases and illnesses. So nutrition covers all these things immediately the child is born. And it goes on throughout childhood. Okay. When the person is an adult, we are not talking about growth and development. Mm -hmm. We are talking about something else. Maintaining what is there mm -hmm. and still fighting common environmental problems by helping a strong and healthy immunity and then providing energy for daily activities. Mm -hmm. So in a nutshell, that's what nutrition helps us to accomplish. So the various traits the child may be born with, either genetic strengths, abilities or whatever, nutrition will be needed to allow those things to manifest in an optimal fashion. Okay. So nutrition is very vital when you talk of children. Thank you. And, and, and clearly from uh, what you've highlighted to us right now, it then means that nutrition is something that needs to be properly planned. It must be planned. Properly planned yes. from the onset. From the onset. Okay, Dr. Temu. So, um, the child is brought into the world. The, the mother obviously is going to be breastfeeding the baby and so on. Um, uh, and, and Dr. Olushola has told us within the first 15 minutes, at the maximum 30 minutes, the child will be ready to, to feed. Um, how important is that first breast feeding for that child? Thank you. Um, breastfeeding, like as mentioned, is very important for a child because the breast milk contains most of the, what the child needs. 
um, in addition to um, elements, food elements, nutrients in the breast milk, we also have um, um, protective um, elements in the breast milk, you know, immune substances in the breast milk. So like he said, you need these to fight infection. You know, so the breast milk is not just to provide, help the child to grow well, uh, it also helps to prevent disease and all that. So it's very, very important, like he said, for once the child, you, the child is born, the child knows. That's why uh, we advocate that the child should be put to breast as soon as the child is born. Because for a newborn baby, for a young baby, the best source of nutrition is the breast milk. And then somewhere along the line, as the child matures, it may now transit to um, adult diets, but that has to be gradual. We call it uh, a process of weaning, weaning where the child transits from breast milk and uh, semi-solid diet to full adult diet. Okay, um, so uh, Dr. Okwanlasa, now we talked about the nutrition for the child being planned and structured. Uh, maybe we can look at all of this from the child is now born, uh, maybe another age bracket, what should we be looking at doing, and another age bracket, bracket what should we be looking at doing. Now, beginning from that point when the child, child is, born, is born, there are some women who at that point, the, the breast milk is not really flowing yet. What should they do? Okay. Thank you. Mm. The key issue is that the woman during pregnancy mm. should attend proper antenatal services. Okay. Where a lot of doubts and fears about breastfeeding are dispelled okay and proper techniques mm. of breastfeeding is taught and that's why the woman has to be in a proper healthcare facility okay where these things are taught breast milk is not based on the size of the breast mm. the breast has the structure mm. no matter its size to produce milk mm -hmm. and every woman can be made to lactate mm -hmm. Well, the other thing we need to know is that a woman may not lactate early because of various factors. Okay. First, misconceptions. She has already bought formula, the best and the most expensive formula that she wants <laughs> to give her child. <laughs> so already her mind is tuned off. Okay. Secondly, if a woman suffers complications after, during delivery, okay. pain and all those hemorrhage and various things may disturb. Then if a mother has inverted nipple, then it will be a little difficult. And that's why during pregnancy, these things are taught. If the nipple is inverted, it can be inverted okay. in order to facilitate breastfeeding. Then there are breastfeeding techniques. Okay. There is a proper way to breastfeed. And this one is important to ensure that breastfeeding does not bring pain continuously to the mother. Actually, pain in the back, mm. pain in the neck, which are the things that can make the mother's mind to tune off because the hormone for stimulating the milk is prolactin, is in the brain. Mm. And when the mother is stressed up, poor sleep, unhappy, and various other things, milk productions begin to drop. So immediately the child is born, once the mother is ready, baby most likely will be ready because mm. it's healthy and strong. So the mother is taught how to position the baby. The palm of the mother, under the buttocks of the baby, Okay. The baby's head in the crotch of the elbow okay. and of course the baby is turned to face the mother and lifted up to the breast lifted up not the mother bending to go to the baby the baby is lifted up to the breast then the entire nipple not a part of it the complete nipple is put inside the baby's mouth the baby's mouth will grab it mm. because once the baby applies pressure to the areola behind the nipple that's where the milk is so not pressure on the nipple itself? No pressure on the nipple. Pressure mm. on the nipple will call excoriation, serious pain for the mother, and also cause a negative feedback. The mother would not want to breastfeed. And the first milk in the first few days is called colostrum. Mm. Breast milk is a living thing. Mm. It contains living cells. Mm. It's not just antibodies. Mm. There are white blood cells directly excreted mm. into the milk, ready to fight, mm. preformed soldiers. Mm to help those ch that child in the beginning of the pregnancy. Wow. And uh, in the beginning of the uh, life mm. that the child has now been born. Then, after a few days, the mother will begin to notice that she produces breast milk that changes in color. Immediately she wants to breastfeed, the first milk that comes out is, even though it's whitish, is lighter, more watery, mm. so that the baby's thirst is quenched. Mm. 
the baby does not need water mm. from any other place. The breast milk, the first part of it for the first 10 minutes usually is watery. It will quench the thirst of the baby. Mm. After about 10 minutes of breastfeeding on the same breast, thicker milk will start flowing, mm. which will be like a solid part of the milk to satiate the baby's hunger okay. and appetite and cause growth. Mm. So it is advised the mother uh, allows the baby to spend at least 30 minutes on one breast. On one breast. For a breastfeeding session? For a breastfeeding session. Okay. Minimum of 30 minutes. So that the baby drinks water and takes solid milk. It takes the two. Mm. That baby will be able to sleep contented without disturbing the mother every 45 minutes oh. for food. Then the mother will now say, the breast milk is not enough. Okay. So if the mother is changing the baby from breast to breast for 10, 10 minutes, the baby takes water here and takes water here mm. and is shouting 40 minutes later. So oh. a lot of time, this must be thought and the woman must know she can breastfeed. If you could carry the pregnancy, you can breastfeed the pregnancy. Uh, the baby because you are prepared during that nine months mm. for breastfeeding 